Man, what is happening, my YouTube family? Of course, it is your boy, B. New. I am coming at you on this Tuesday morning. Happy Tuesday morning to everybody. First and foremost, as always, I want to send out positive vibrations and vibes and prayers to everybody who could be listening. Now, with that being said, we got a lot of news and notes that we're going to talk about, you know, that took place in the NBA on yesterday. There was actually eight games on yesterday. It was a full slate. I know a lot of people might have been watching Monday Night Football, but not me because you know this is all about the nba on this channel and with me so with all that being said the lakers finally got in the win column yesterday without lebron james and they were actually uh taking on a team that was a little bit better than teams that they had lost to uh oklahoma city who they lost to twice without lebron james uh even though they did get smashed by Portland without LeBron James. But this Charlotte team is a pretty good team. Miles Bridge has been hooping as you know what off. And uh, of course, we all know LaMelo Ball, he's been doing this thing. He had the triple dub last night as well. Uh, but uh, the Charlotte Hornets did fall short against the Lakers on yesterday. And even though the Lakers did look good in the win column by notching that victory last night and AD coming back from his stomach ailment, uh, there's some things that, that, that were really glaring to me. So if you look at the stat sheet, you might see, well, you know, Russell Westbrook, he, he got the triple dub or whatnot. Uh, once again, which everybody says, well, sometimes triple dubs can be overrated, but at the end of the day, you know, getting points, rebounds, and assists to me is never overrated. But it does matter how you accumulate these statistics and to me, and if it really is helping your team. Now, if you look at if you look at what Russ did, he had 17 points, uh, 12 rebounds, and 14 assists. And those 14 assists, of course, were good assists because I would say the majority of those assists came on lobs to Dwight Howard and to uh, DJ. And DeAndre Jordan had a lot of good easy dunks from Russell Westbrook. So it seems like they have developed a chemistry. And Russell Westbrook, if you can get somebody an easy look like a dunk, then that's a high percentage shot that you are going to make. When I want to say DJ is shooting the highest percentage in the league because all he do is dunk, dunk, dunk no matter what. And that's going to lead you to having a high field goal percentage. But the thing that kind of, and of course, you know, Anthony Davis had a great game, 32 points, 12 rebounds, uh, four assists. He had like five blocks, three steals. So he just really filled up the stat sheet last night in his return. And he kind of put that Lakers team on his back no matter what. He was not going to allow, him, uh, allow them to lose. Uh, now, if you look at his plus minus for the game, which I know a lot of people don't like the plus minus, I, I do like the plus minus because plus minus gives you an indication look when you were on the floor was your team ahead or was your team losing so that's see how much you contributed now of course you always have to take in other factors of who you were on the floor with when it comes to the plus minus so you do have to scrutinize that particular statistic but at the end of the day it can still be glaring because if you look at the Lakers uh, starters the whole Lakers starters from top to bottom was in the minus so the whole Lakers starter from top to bottom were in the minus. So what does that tell you? That when they were in the game, they weren't up. Then if you look at the Lakers entire bench, they were in the positive. The whole bench was in the positive. So what, what I got from watching the game and also looking at the statistics is that we know Russ is not going to be a bench player. And I know yesterday I did a little short video on TikTok that I posted on here talking about should they trade Russ and all of this and that. I still think it's too early to decide because they knew what they was getting when they got Russ. LeBron knew what he was getting when he got Russ. Palenka knew, they all knew that Russ could be a, a high turnover machine, uh, that he wasn't just the best uh, outside shooter. But that's not what they brought him here for. They brought him here to make the game easier for others in which he did on yesterday and i think when he does play with the bench uh he he can get a lot of people some easy looks and i like wayne ellerton has returned to the lineup i've always liked him even way back in the day since he was a grizzly wayne ellerton is more than capable of hitting down the open three-point shot and that's what the lakers did in some of the lineups yesterday they surrounded westbrook with the shooters so the lakers still have plenty of shooters on the team malik monk I think he shot two out of three last night. The way 
as Wayne Ellington shot two out of three from three pointers, but even Carmelo, Carmelo was seven out of 10 from three. And I keep saying this, at home, Carmelo in the comforts and the confines of the Staples Center is a different player than he has been on the road. It's not like he's shooting trash on the road, but man, he is lighting it up at home. And I think it's the crowd who just cheering him on. He loves to put on the show. So think about it, he shot 70%. 70 percent from three-point range last night which was really big you know and part of the Lakers victory and i said that before that when you have especially when lebron james comes back to the lineup when you have four different players that's capable of giving you 30 on any given night then you're going to give yourself a good chance to win because we all know lebron is capable of giving you 30. ad is capable of giving you 30. westbrook is capable of giving you 30. and of course uh who am i missing carmelo is capable of giving you 30. So all four of them is capable of giving you 30. And Melo got 28 last night, 29, I think, 29 points he got last night. So he didn't quite get 30. But I'm telling you, seven out of uh, seven out of 10 from threes was amazing. And it really helped the Lakers uh, pull off the victory. And the game, uh, you know, went to overtime, which it didn't necessarily have to. Uh, it was closer than what it really should have been. But of course, like I said, uh, the Charlotte Hornets team is well coached. Uh, they actually been playing well. Miles Bridges was the Eastern Conference Player of the Week last week. So, you know, he's doing his thing. And he's not just athletic. Uh, a lot of people think he's just athletic and can get it done like that. But he has a great outside shot now. He's easily able to take you off the dribble and take you to the hole, causing the weak side help to collapse to his side. And then he has the vision to pass it out to somebody else who's capable of hitting the shot. And we saw what Melo Ball did last night. Uh, you know, he's more than capable of being a, a great NBA player, and he's already on his way. And I want to say, if I'm not mistaken, he rated higher than Westbrook on 2K, which is a slap in the face to Russell Westbrook. But, hey, it is what it is right now because people may, would rather have him on their team. But I think Westbrook wants to shut up a lot of naysayers, and I, for one, still think it's too early to try to blow up this whole thing and say get rid of Westbrook, even though he is carrying a very large salary. Uh, but the way I look at it is – let LeBron James and them all play. They haven't even played 10 games together. They haven't even played 10 games together and people talking about blowing it up. Come on, fam. Why would you do that when you haven't even allowed them to play? Stagger the minutes. All you have to do is stagger the minutes. Sure, let Westbrook start with LeBron, but pull him out in like the seven minute mark, the six minute mark. Let him go to the bench to get his rest. And then, of course, pull LeBron back out in the three-minute mark. When two-minute mark, like normal, of the first quarter, then let Westbrook come back into the first quarter and finish out the first quarter with AD and company. And then start the second quarter, have LeBron out there without Russ. And then let LeBron sit at his six-minute mark or seven-minute mark. And then you bring Russ in to play the rest of the quarter and you let LeBron get his break until like the three or four-minute mark and he can come in and play somewhat with Russ and then Russ can sit down. And for people who think Rondo is still not a good player and can't get it done, Rondo was very effective last night because if you look at his stat sheet, he was the highest plus minus on the floor out of all the bench players. He was plus 20. Austin Reeves played great defense last night, by the way. I think Austin Reeves has become a staple in the rotation. And I know THT is going to come back and going to demand a lot of those minutes, and, and rightfully so. But I think if you can get THT going with Austin Reeves, man, you could have something good for your bitch. Because to me, depth is what's going to win you games in the NBA and championships. Because no matter what, when you have a team, even when the Miami Heat, when they bench got really low back in the day, uh, when they didn't have that depth, you could tell they really struggled when superstars would go to the bench. You have to have depth. Even the great Detroit Pistons, the great Lakers teams back in the day in the 80s and, and, and even the, the Celtics and everybody, they all had great bench. You have to have a great bench. And I think the Lakers' depth, uh, they have more than enough capable players of contributing uh, and getting points and getting uh not just points, but also playing defense because Bay's more, he's more than capable of playing good defense too. So I think the coaching staff will eventually figure it out. I know Vogel to me is not the sharpest tool in the shed when it comes to some of these things, but at the end of the day, I think the Lakers will figure it out uh, with the bench being plus, all the benches plus, like I said, Rondo plus 20, Melo plus 13, like for them to be plus and the starters to be minus, that is telling, you know. Uh, I feel like on that bench, Russell has great chemistry with DJ who could be on the bench, come playing with the bench players and with Dwight Howard, of course, 
Uh, he found him for some easy uh, alley-oop dunks. Out of Russ's 14 assists, I want to say five or six of them was lobs. So if you can get other players involved and get easy dunks like that, then that's very important to your half-court offense because we know the Lakers are going to get out and cause turnovers, which Russ and uh, AD had a couple steals that led to easy fast-break opportunities. So with all that being said, I'm still not concerned about the Lakers. I'm not concerned about the Lakers. But what y'all need to be concerned about, everybody who worried about the Lakers, need to be concerned about them Brooklyn Nets. Because without Kyrie, they haven't been looking too good. And you can see last night uh, when they played against Chicago, everything was very close. You know, KD was doing his thing. He had 38 points. You know, just had the mid-range going, the outside going. But the rest of the Brooklyn players, what did they really do to contribute? Even Harden only had 16, 17 points. And the thing about it, Harden was only four out of 11. How did Harden only take 11 shots? I didn't get to really watch much of that game, but how did Harden only take 11 shots? And out of 11 shots, he was three out of seven on three. So if he was four out of 11, three of those shots was threes. And he was three out of seven on threes. So you got to think, out of those 11 shots, seven of them was three. So only four of his other shots were not three-pointers. And that's not going to be the recipe for success for the Brooklyn Nets because Harden is going to have to start getting other people involved and taking a shot. I know a lot of people saying these rule changes is really affecting him. So far, it looks like it has to me. Uh, I think he's something that he can fight through and get better. I know a lot of his game was predicated on getting to the free throw line, but that doesn't necessarily mean that, that uh, that's all he can do. So we're going to see what James Harden can do. But the Brooklyn Nets, uh, they fell apart in the fourth quarter last night. In the fourth quarter, they was outscored 42-17. to 17. So you get outscored 42-17 to 17 in the fourth quarter, then that right there lets let me know that their defense isn't where it needs to be. And when they needed to get stops, they simply could not. DeMar DeRozan was doing his thing. He simply had his way last night. And... Of course, Zach Levine did his thing as usual as the Chicago Bulls went on to beat the hell out of the Brooklyn Nets, 118 to 95. So with all that being said, uh, I just feel like Brooklyn still has a lot to go. But if I still had to make a bet on it, if I still had to put money on who was going to be on the finals, I know it didn't happen last year, even though it was a lot of injuries, but I'm still going to go with the prohibitive favorites of the, the most talented teams because most talented teams doesn't necessarily mean that they're always going to be the team to hoist their championship up at the end of the year. But I'm still going to go with Brooklyn and the Lakers to be, to be that. But like I said, the most talented team doesn't always, the most talented team isn't always the team that is victorious uh, and wins the championship. And, you know, speaking of which, <laughs> sometimes the team that's not the most talented that plays the best basketball is the team that actually wins. And that team, what they're looking like to me, is the Golden State Warriors, who have only lost one game this year, and that was to the mighty Bill Street Blue of the Memphis Grizzlies and John Morant. But last night when Steph Curry took on, uh, when Steph Curry took on, um, the Atlanta Hawks and Trey Young, I think Candace Parker even tweeted before the game, uh, he going against this young fella, he about to go out and light it up and drop 50. He didn't do that against Ja, he young. But I guess, because Trey liked to shoot a lot of threes, he wants to show him who was the master blaster from the three, and that is Steph Curry, of course, as we all know, the greatest three-point shooter of all time. And Golden State is looking very dangerous the way uh, Steph Curry, Jordan Poole, uh, Draymond Green, of course, putting in the dirty work, uh, you know, they play great team ball because the ball is quicker than the person. So if you keep swinging that ball, swinging that ball, and people are helping on the other side of the defense, then that right there lets you know that the Golden State Warriors uh, can be highly successful on offense, in which they have been. Uh, they leading the league in scoring. Steph Curry, I think, uh, is, not, is in the top three as far as leading the team in scoring. But at the end of the day, playoffs is all about matchups and once you get to the playoffs things changed in the regular season because you're not playing different teams you're playing the same team and you got to beat that same team four times out of seven so that team is going to learn you they're going to come up with different schemes to stop you so if Steph Curry is the one that's going off then you got to find ways to stop him on the defensive end but once Clay Thompson returns and if he comes back fully healthy they're going to be looking like the golden state of old and that just goes to show you how great Steve Kerr coaching is. Uh, and a lot of people want to say, you know, he just took over and, you know, that was Mark Jackson's squad, which of course Mark Jackson did lead them 
to what, you know, to being a great team and, you know, making players better and put them in position to win. But ultimately, it was the coaching of uh, Steve Kerr uh, who allowed them to have their most success as far as the way they ran their offensive sets. And a lot of that credit should go to Steve Kerr because I'm not going to take anything away from him. So Steph Curry went off last night, like I said, 50 points, uh, seven, uh, 10 assists, seven rebounds. Man, he almost had the 50 point triple dub, but not quite. But of course, the main stat that mattered was that young victory. So Golden State sits atop the Western Conference uh, standings, and we shall see how it all goes for them. But at the end of the day, man, this is your boy, man, right on to the real. Uh, much love to the haters. I have not forgot about, I have not forgot about the finishing of the countdown. But today was a day I needed to touch on some days of the, of the NBA news and notes, but since the Lakers will not be in action tonight on everything, y'all, I will come back with the video tomorrow, finishing up that countdown or getting close to it, at least get down to the top one or two, as if you didn't know who the damn goat was. But anyway, like I said, this your boy B New, man. I got to get the hell out of here because I don't even know where I'm at. Right on to the real and much love to y'all haters. I'm out.